Hey everybody, Creative Katie here. Welcome to another art journal tutorial. Here's a sneak peek. Love the colors of this one. So I'm going to try to get into this color zone and I look at the color wheel and it's a great tool to use to pick colors. Now colors that are next to each other on the color wheel are anaglas colors and they will always, always, always go together. And so once I picked the colors, I went through my stash and I pulled some of this is deli paper that has been colored. Some of it is coffee filters, all in that color family, that teal and blue color family. And I'm not going to lie, this is definitely my happy place in the color family. Teal is very calming and restorative to me and when you look at my walls of my art that's what I see an awful lot of although other colors have definitely seeped into my repertoire as well so sometimes when you are going through you're stuck and you don't know what to do pick an old favorite it's like putting on that comfortable pair of jeans. So when you use these collage papers as an initial layer, what you are doing is breaking that blank page. You are also starting your color story. And on these papers, we have color and we have texture and we have pattern and that will in some way, shape, or form, shape the direction that this page goes. It will give you instant inspiration. Even if you don't end up seeing some of it or all of it at a later stage, it gets you going. So I'm grabbing some of my blues and I have this maidenhair fern stencil and I'm tech stamping on with the blue. I wasn't happy with the color of it and I was either going to darken it or lighten it and then I decided you know I'm going to go black and I love the contrast here. that just makes those other colors work so well. And it's not something that I typically do. And this Maidenhair Fern stencil is a nice background stencil. I mean, you could use it as a focal image, but I really like the pattern, the frilliness of it. Now I'm just scraping some gesso across this. This is adding texture and it's pushing back some of the pattern and the color that we have in the background. This is a technique that I've been playing with. I don't know that I've perfected it and I don't always get the results in my head, but it's forcing me to solve problems and to create. So now I'm just adding a little bit more of the color. So I've got Prussian blue, I've got that yellow, and I think I, I believe that was phthalo green. And I'm just mixing it and blending with water, with my fingers, and it's catching in the nooks and the crannies of the texture. And the colors that I'm using here are the colors that I had in the initial layer. Now I have this Koi Pond stencil and I've had this for a long time and I've pulled it out. I cannot tell you how many times I've pulled it out and then I end up putting it away. It just never quite seems to get done. So today I decide, you know what, I am going to push through. I am simply going to use it. And 
If it works, great. And if it doesn't, I'm going to learn. So I'm using gesso and I'm going through the stencil and I just want to block off the background. My plan here is to paint this koi afterwards with the color of koi, the, the coral, the orange. And I think that's going, because that's opposite the color wheel of what the background is, it's going to really pop. So here I'm coming in and I just lay the stencil over again and I'm coming in with the orange color. And I'm adding some darker parts and lighter parts and I'm just blending it just as I go. I believe I add in some copper as well because I want some shimmer in this There's the copper. Wasn't sure if I had mixed it in with the paints initially or came back and, and did it afterwards. If I was doing this over, I would use the smaller koi pattern, not the bigger one. This page and the size of the stencil wasn't quite a match in my mind, but I go through it. And sometimes when you are playing with it and using something new, you need to go through that learning cycle. I wanted to bring out the koi, so I grabbed my fine line bottle and I'm outlining it in black. And I'm going to be totally honest here. I am not getting the complete effect of what was in my head. But I am pushing through and I'm, I'm just continuing to go on. So one of the things, when you do a page and it doesn't do exactly what you want it to do, write on the back what you would do differently if you were doing that page again. I love, love, love this background. I love everything about this background. I love how the contrast works with the coral orangey color and the background. As I said, I would change the size of the koi. I would use the smaller one. Or I would stencil it on with black, maybe black modeling paste. Because lots of times, you need to be in the thick of creating to get ideas. And I know lots when I'm working, that's exactly what happens is as I'm doing it, I get, oh, I could do this. Oh, I could do this. Take time to write those things down and then give them a try. It just reminds me of the quote, inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. The best way to figure out how to do something is to start and do it. So I'm wanting more contrast, so I'm adding more of the black, and I'm liking this effect. And having the acrylic paint that's, that's just thinned with water and using the fine line bottle is just perfect. As, a, as this page is, is turned basically upside down, I actually like it better. Interesting. So I'm edging the, the page with black and now with charcoal pencil. This is a woodless charcoal pencil. I love using this for shading. 
It's so quick and easy. It isn't permanent. So if I was going to varnish this, I would have to spray it with a spray fixative first so it doesn't move. And then I come back. I want it a little bit darker and I'm just coming back and I'm using a very lazy um, float acrylic technique here. I'm not doing it exactly um, as it should be. I have these words that are kind of in a Japanese font and I just decide I'm going to do dream, hope, and believe. All three of them. And it just kind of worked together with the feel of the koi. It was a font that I downloaded from dafont.com. I'm just adding some more shading around the koi with my woodless charcoal pencil. Links to the stencils and things that I've used are in the description box. I'm looking at the background. Apparently I, I put the stencil, the Retroverse stencil on top and I removed paint through the stencils. You can see that um, circular Retroverse stencil there. That's one of my favorite stencils. But somehow I didn't get the footage on that. Sorry, I... I'm grabbing some of that copper and thinning it down and I'm going to splatter just to introduce that orangey color to the rest of the page. And you know, from a distance, you know, now after several days, weeks have actually gone by since I've done this, I'm actually liking the look of this. I grab my white and I am just outlining the letters. I thought it needed it, but in hindsight, I'm thinking I liked it better with just the black. So again, if I was writing on the back of this page, that would be something that I would write. Next time, try just solid black. Just made it a little too busy, I think. But again, there is no right or wrong. There's just your own gut instinct. So I decide he needs an eye. So I found a picture of a koi and I'm just drawing an eyeball in to just add that little bit of detail. It just looked a little off to me. And I'm going over this with my Secura Glaze Black. And it's just adding a dimensional element to it and a little bit of shine and shimmer. So there I'm, I'm playing with the size and I'm thinking that size would have worked a little bit better. So if I redo this page, I will do it again. Loving this background, we'll recreate this background somewhere else and use it again because I love the colors. I just have to figure out how to play with it. Here's some close-ups of the finished project. So when things don't go right, it's just an opportunity to solve problems and to discover new ways of doing things. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.